Hello everyone, I am Dr. Shankar De. In this video, I am going to inform you about the registration fees for NEET PG counseling and what are the documents and certificates that is required during admission to the allotted college. So let's begin our discussion. So first topic is registration fees. So what is the registration fees for NEET PG counseling? At the time of registration, students must pay two kind of fee. One is non-refundable fee, another is refundable fee. So you have to pay two kind of fees. One is non-refundable and another is refundable security deposit. So non-refundable non registration fee for all India quota and central university unreserved candidates and economically weaker section EWS candidates is 1000. So non-refundable fees for unreserved and EWS is 1000 rupees and for SC, ST, OBC and PWD candidates it is 500 rupees. So non-refundable money for unreserved and economically weaker section is 1000 for other categories like SC, ST, OBC and PWD it is 500 rupees and non-refundable registration fee for deemed university candidate is 5000 rupees. So 1000, 500 and 5000 respectively. Next what is refundable money? Refundable is refundable money is a security deposit which will be refunded to the candidates after joining the allotted college or if the candidate did not get any seat during counseling to the same during counseling then then the money is refundable also to the same account of candidate from which the payment had been made so this money is totally refundable either you uh, joined uh, the in the allotted college or if any candidate did not get any seat during the counseling in both cases this money is refundable so this refundable security money for ur and ews is 25000 rupees so 25000 rupees for unreserved candidates and ews candidates and for all india quota others other category like SCST, OBC, PWD, it is 10,000 rupees. So it is 10,000. It is 10,000. And for deemed universities, refundable money is 2 lakhs. For deemed universities, it is 2 lakh. So suppose you are, suppose you are unreserved candidate. So you have to pay 1,000 plus 25,000 means total 26,000 during your registration suppose you are any uh, candidates like from category sc st obc so then you have to pay 500 rupees 500 plus 10000 means 10500 so okay 10500 for registration and for deemed university total it is 2 lakh 5000 okay so for ews and you are it is 26,000 so 25,000 plus 1,000 so this is all about registration fee now I will discuss what are the documents and certificates that is required for admission in allotted medical college so candidates without original certificate shall not be allowed to take admission in allotted college so all certificates are required in original form so please note it all certificates that is required to be in original because without original certificates or documents you shall not be allowed to take admission in allotted medical college candidates who have deposited their original documents with any other institute or college or university and come for admission with a certificate stating that their original certificates are deposited with the institute or college university shall not be allowed to take admission in the allotted medical college so please take care 
of this part so we you should you should prepare with all the documents in both original form and also with two or three xerox xerox okay of all these original documents so you should prepare with both original and xerox xerox of this uh, uh, documents or certificate so what are the documents that is required for admission first one is at uh, allotment letter so this allotment letter which which is issued by mcc so allotment letter issued by mcc medical counseling committee so th this is the basic requirement or essential requirement for admission in allotted college allotment letter issued by medical counseling committee then admit card issued by nbe national board of examination your admit card for neat pg your result or rank letter your category uh, which will mention your overall rank aq rank or category rank so your rank letter is important so rank letter or result issued by nbe national board of examination so allotment letter admit card result or rank letter your mbbs mark sheet so your mbbs mark sheet for first professional mbbs second professional mbbs and third professional mbbs so you have to so you have to show all the mark sheet first professional second professional and third professional part one part two mark sheets during admission both in original form and in xerox form your mbbs degree certificate or any provisional certificates given by your university so mbbs degree certificate or provisional certificate next thing is internship completion certificate issued by your head of the institution or college so this is this uh, internship completion certificate should be issued by your head of institution or college so this will be given by your head of institution internship completion certificate after completion of your internship next your permanent and provisional registration certificate either permanent registration certificate if permanent is not available at the time of uh, admission then you should provide provisional registration certificate then date of birth proof this date of birth proof this date of birth proof can be your class 10 uh, class 10 certificate or admit card or class 10 plus 2 which should mention your date of birth or birth certificate so either class 10 um, so secondary school certificate or higher secondary school certificate or admit card or your birth certificate this will act as your date of birth proof any id proof like your voter card like voter id or your other so voter other or your passport or driving license so any of the id proof is required any of the following id proof so among voter id other passport or driving license any of the id proof is required during admission and for category candidates category certificate is required like your sc or st certificates for all india counseling if applicable and for obc candidates obc certificate has to be obc ncl certificate so obc non creamy layer certificate uh, issued for central institute so non creamy layer and your obc should be part of central list of obc so obc certificate uh, and your subca should be part of central list of obc and obc ncl or non creamy layer certificate issued for central institute is required okay and for EWS, EWS certificate has to be issued as per central norms and for PWD certificate has to be issued by designated authorities as per RPWD Act. As per RPWD Act, as per 21 benchmark disabilities defined. Okay. And what is the, what are the other certificate? This other certificate is not required but for admission during all india counseling may be required for some state counseling during or before the choice filling or some may be required after the commencement of the course 
or sometimes some specific college university may ask you for this type of certificate one is migration certificate so migration certificate if you are joining postgraduate in a university which is different from the university in which you did your mbbs so then only a migration certificate would be required to be submitted in the pg university so if your pg and ug university is different then only migration certificate is required the migration certificate is to be taken from mbbs university if your mbbs university is ready to give one now you expect to apply and you expect to apply for other universities you can get this now itself so this should be collected from your ug university migration certificate if you are applying for pg course in any other university eligibility certificate if you are joining pg in a university which is different from university in a, which you did your mbbs so in this case the um, application is all the cause of providing eligibility certificate is also same if your ug and pg university is different then the eligibility certificate is to be taken from the pg university and migration certificate is to be taken from ug university and eligibility certificate is to be taken from pg university by submitting your migration certificate when you will submit your migration certificate then you will receive one eligibility certificate from your pg university after submitting your migration certificate and other relevant documents you need to have your migration certificate from mbbs university to apply for the eligibility certificate if both mbbs university and pg universities are same so then there is no need of migration if my uh, if pg and ug university is same then there is no need of this migration certificate and eligibility certificate okay is it clear then noc form registered medical certificate so in which cases noc form registered medical certificate is required noc form medical uh, registered medical council not registered medical certificate noc form registered medical council noc form registered medical council if you are a already registered in a particular state council and if you join pg in another state suppose you are from west bengal and you want to do pg in up uttar pradesh in that case it is applicable nac form so i have given one example any in any state inter state uh, pg course if you are already registered in a particular state and if you join pg in another state you have to register yourself in the medical council in of the state where would be doing your md and ms so you should need an noc from your currently registered state medical council for this new state medical counseling registration this can be done after the final upgradation okay so do not need to worry about it till your seat is final okay after your seat is final after the, all the counseling round is over you can submit your noc you can submit your noc to the college or university for new medical council registration then gap certificate for which candidate it is required it is relevant for maharashtra candidates to my knowledge self affidavit of gap between this gap certificate actually denotes the gap between your completion of qualification and joining next school suppose your ug suppose your ug completion and joining to your post graduation so the gap this gap denotes okay you gap certificate denotes this gap your ug completion and pg course joining okay so this is all about the other certificates and for nri claiming candidates what are the documents that is required for nri category for nri category one thing the uh, the following documents are required Docu first one is documents that claiming that the sponsor is an nri like you have to prove that you are a nri candidate suppose the documents like your passport your passport or visa 
of this sponsor is required so this document claiming that the sponsor is an ri nri that is required another thing is relationship of nri with the candidate then affidavit of the sponsor that he or she will sponsor the entire course fee of the candidate duly notarized then another thing embassy certificate of the sponsor certificate from the consulate then need scorecard then uh, the all the certificates or documents that i have mentioned beforehand uh, one thing there will be no reservation for obc sc st pwd and ews candidates in deemed university for nri category okay there will be no reservation for uh, category under nri category for deemed university in deemed university there will be no reservation for obc sc st pwd and ews for nri claiming candidates so this is all about the documents required and the registration fees i hope this video will help you a lot in your counseling process so all the best everyone for your neat pg counseling thank you very much for your attention and lastly don't forget to subscribe my channel dr shankode so subscribe sus subscribe the channel and share the video with your friends juniors and seniors thank you very much